In this lesson, you will learn about push technology and how it can transform the internet. You will learn several methods by which information can be pushed on the internet, including push clients and email. The concept of push is that rather than going to the sites on the internet to gather information, the information is sent to you. That is, the information is pushed to you rather than pulled or browsed by you. This is a big change from the way the internet has been used up till now. Not that push equates to broadcasting, for example television, but it does allow content providers to send information out to users rather than waiting for them to come and visit a site. To reinforce the notion of push being similar to broadcasting, you have the content being delivered through channels. Each channel is really a website or category, such as sports. The backers of push technology regard it as a win-win situation. Consumers are given the luxury of not having to always go looking for information, and also the information is stored for offline browsing. Advertisers and other information providers are able to be more proactive and to reach consumers more effectively. Push has taken on several forms. Some programs display content in the screensaver, while others use the desktop. These programs allow you to subscribe to the content you want and also specify when you want the content updated. The program will then gather information from the category selected by you and deliver it to your computer at the intervals you have established. You view the information from your hard drive rather than having to wait for the pages to load from remote websites. Another scenario is to use email to do the pushing. As you saw earlier, mail programs are able to view web pages as messages. Content providers are now sending email messages formatted in HTML. These messages normally contain news headlines with hyperlinks to the full stories. Again, once the message is downloaded to your computer, you can read it offline anytime you wish. You will take a closer look at these uses throughout this lesson. Although they do differ in their implementation, they are all based on the basic push model of sending information to users rather than waiting for users to visit a site. Not surprisingly, the major browser companies Netscape and Microsoft have developed software for reading pushed content. There are also several other companies that were early creators of push software. Netcaster uses push technology to deliver information to your computer desktop. Using open internet standards such as Java and HTML, Netcaster is able to grab regular websites as well as use predefined channels. The predefined channels used Castanet technology from Marimba. The contents of these channels are still created in HTML and Java but are transmitted using Castanet. Castanet formats the predefined channels to work with Netcaster. The result is dynamic content, such as scrolling stock tickers and headlines. Although it is normally best to work with open standards when it comes to the internet, because of the wide variety of computers, operating systems, etc. accessing the network, in this case, the use of open standards often causes performance problems. You may notice while using Netcaster, that it can be extremely slow. This is the first real attempt at using Java, JavaScript and HTML to deliver pushed content. Thus, there are bound to be technological issues that impede performance. Many of the other push technology providers use proprietary methods to deliver the information. This can result in better performance, but limits the information you receive to that supplied by content providers who use this proprietary technology. For now, you are left with the trade-off of more content for poor performance. In the future, however, Netcaster's performance is likely to improve as technologies used within it mature. Push technology is a large part of Microsoft's model for browsing the web and your own desktop. They employ several methods for content delivery. First, the browser, Internet Explorer, has a button on the toolbar for channels that opens up a channel bar, similar to Netcaster's Channel Finder. 
you subscribe to channels by clicking on a particular channel which will bring you to the content provider's website. When you ask to add the channel, you are presented with several options for how often you would like the channel updated. From that point, when you click on a subscribe channel, you will receive the latest channel content. This method of accessing push content is similar to bookmark. Second, you can have channels appear on top of the desktop similar to Netscape Netcaster. This is accomplished by using the full screen button on the browser toolbar. You can also achieve this by accessing channels from the desktop channel bar. The channel bar has the same channels as those that appear in the browser but acts as a separate application. When you click on a channel in the desktop channel bar, it is shown in full screen. A third method allows you to choose the active desktop option. The first two methods are considered push, but it is the active desktop method which fits the push model more closely. The channel contents are automatically downloaded and displayed as the desktop, that is, not on top of the desktop, but the channels actually become the desktop. The content providers form a closer relationship with users by providing up-to-the-minute news and information. The active desktop changes the entire interface to your system, making it more like a browser. With a fourth method, you can have the channel contents displayed as a screen saver. The look is similar to that of the active desktop, but the contents appear as a screen saver instead of as the desktop. The pages that are displayed as channels are normally standard web pages that are delivered using a proprietary method created by Microsoft called Channel Definition Format, CDF. Microsoft has submitted CDF as a standard for all push technology on the Internet, but this is still under discussion. There are several other push clients not created by the browser makers, the most popular of which is Infogate. Because Infogate is so popular, it is able to get many of the top content providers to be channels for their network. You can download Infogate from their site www.infogate.com and many of the content providers include links from their sites for downloading the Infogate software as well. Infogate includes three primary components, viewer for content, ticker and screen saver. The viewer is where you establish your channel preferences and can browse through articles that have been downloaded. These articles are downloaded at intervals established by you. The software will connect to the Infogate server and only download information that has changed since the last download. For instance, if new articles were added to the CNN channel. The ticker is optional but will cause headlines and stock quotes to scroll across your screen. It will remain on the screen even when you are in other applications, appearing just above the Windows 95 taskbar or above the application window. When you install Infogate, it will automatically make itself your default screen saver. Each channel to which you have subscribed will flash headlines. You can read the full story by clicking on the headline which will open the viewer to display the text. Because of HTML enabled email clients, such as Messenger, push technology can also include email messages. Sending messages formatted with HTML is not a prerequisite for using email push, but it does give content providers more choices for the types of information they can deliver. Email push works very similar to push clients. You can often create preferences for the types of information you want emailed to you, along with when it should be delivered. The messages can be fairly standard web pages complete with images and links or simply the plain text of an article. The advantages of email push include the ability to receive more up-to-date information and further customization. Standard push clients can be made to check for new information every 30 minutes or so, but this can interrupt or hinder other processes as the software connects to the server. With email push, you can receive the same information within moments of it being released, although this is really dependent on how often your mail client checks for mail. Customization involves obtaining information based on certain criteria. Much like the information agents we saw earlier, you can ask that a message be sent to you if, for instance, a stock price drops below a certain price. 
The disadvantages of email push include less information and the need for browsers to view additional information. The disadvantages are tied together. Often the content providers will send messages with the headline of an article and a short description with a link to the full article. Not only do you not receive the full article, but you must go online to view the entire story. This may not be a big issue if you have dedicated connection, but can become frustrating if you read your email offline. In that case, every time you wanted to read the rest of a story, you would have to make a connection to the internet. Of course, it is up to the content provider to decide whether they want to provide the entire article or only a portion.